Now at this juncture we have Mr. Wolchcombe's longtime colleague both in journalism and eventually politics, Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell. Both men eventually rising to become senior cabinet ministers in both the Christie and Davis administrations. Minister Wilchum, Minister Mitchell, rather. Good morning. Morning, morning. And um, our condolences from the Broadcasting Corporation. As noted, you and Mr. Wilchcombe spent considerable time together um, here at the Broadcasting Corporation, eventually stepping into frontline politics to serve, as we just noted, in both PLP administrations of the Christie administration and today the Davis administration. Tell us about your friendship with Mr. Wolchcombe. Let's begin there. Well, in 1977, uh, then Prime Minister Pinling uh, asked me to join the Broadcasting Corporation in preparation for the Queen's official visit in 1977 to the country to open Parliament. So that began my service at the corporation, which lasted for two years. During the course of the two years that I worked at the corporation, I became the director of news and public affairs. And Obi Wilshkom, I was introduced to him when I took an official visit up to Grand Bahama. He was then a sports reporter at this huge Afro. But one of the most uh, energetic, kind, uh, supporting people you could meet. And uh, I got to know him, got to know his family. So when I took over the job of uh, directed news, I thought he was being underutilized in Grand Bahama. And I asked the corporation to transfer him to Nassau. And well, it's been an upward trajectory ever since. And the story has been told um, with his becoming uh, not only a success of the corporation, but later becoming um, a public figure and a member of the Senate, then a member of the House, and a, man, and a minister of the government. And he succeeded in all of those roles. And there's a great deal of affection for him everywhere that he went. It's really unreal to me um, to even be speaking about this because we sat next to one another in the cabinet. And because of the long experience we've had together, uh, you know, we don't take things as seriously as maybe others do who are experiencing it for the first time because you've kind of seen it all before. Um, he often boasted that he'd be selling tickets to my wedding. Uh, well, that's not going to happen anymore. But he, uh, it's just extraordinary, very strange to be having to say this. Um, I knew his dad. Um, I knew his mom knew his sisters and brothers. Uh, it's just uh, unreal to me, is the way I explain it now. You speak of things being unreal, and, and rightly so. It's only been hours since um, many of us found out he, he died. Um, when was the last time you spoke to him? Uh, probably an exchange of text messages. Uh, that's usually the way we communicated in, in the latter years because of the I, I was always, I'm always away given the, the, the exigencies of the job I have. Uh, but we were together for the women's conference that took place in August. And I know how extraordinary how ex extremely proud he was of the success of that. And just last week when I got together here in New York with the uh, Secretary General, in her uh, report to the Commonwealth uh, Foreign Ministers, she was praising his work that he had done at Nassau to organize that conference, and that they were so pleased at the success of it, how well it was organized, and some of the outturns of the conference. So he was well regarded in the Commonwealth as well for the work which he had done. So that's the last time we had an exchange together. We had um, joined each other at the reception at Paradise Island to say farewell to the delegates. And I wanted in particular to be um, sure that I said uh, farewell to Patricia Scotland. And he knew about uh, the work which Patricia Scotland and I did together. Uh, he election as uh, Coma Secretary General. He was very fond of her as well. So uh, as I'm talking to you, that's one of the persons I need to contact uh, very shortly after this interview to speak to about the fact that he's passed on. As I say, the only way you can describe it is unreal.
Speak of him being praised for his work, you also use the phrase that he was well regarded in the international community. What do you think you remember most about Minister Welchcombe, be it in the field of journalism or his political career? I used to always tease him. I say, you know, uh, people really put me at an uh, unfair a, a, a disadvantage when they ask me to speak after you. Because I've never seen anyone who has such a talent to speak extemporaneously. Um, he went and spoke without notes, uh, seamlessly, not a break, uh, just a, a, an excellent speaker, a riveting speaker. Uh, people uh, liked the way he sounded. And uh, he always, uh, of course, reminded me uh, of the times we started out together because his political exposure and career, his introduction to Lyndon Pindley, uh, all of those things came through me as uh, when, when I was director of news because, of course, I saw Sir Lyndon almost every morning. Um, and I became the, um, the NGC member for Clarence Town constituency, which uh, later became South Long Island. And uh, shortly after becoming that, uh, he joined me, he, Mr. Wilshcombe, joined me on a visit to South Long Island, which was the first time he'd actually been in the southern Bahamas. I used to always tease him because there are high hills in uh, Long Island, which, of course, there are no hills in Grand Bahama. And this is the first time he'd seen high hills. And he, he, he said as he got, as he landed at the Deadman's Key Airport, and he looked back, he said, God, they have mountains over here. I always chuckled with him about that. Um, and then... We went and conducted these branch meetings down there. This was shortly after independence uh, came. So we go to this public meeting. And at the public meeting, we say to them, OK, let's all stand and sing the national anthem. And uh, they, people got up, and they started singing, God save the gracious queen. And this old man shouts in the back, not that one, not that one. We got a new one now. So we always chuckled about those those things. and. That introduction in Long Island to the workings of the branch system of the Progressive Liberal Party uh, was uh, the precursor for his ultimately becoming the chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party for a number of years. So that meant he understood the branch system and how the internal workings of the party uh, functioned. And of course, he became very close to Lyndon Pinley. Um, during uh, some of the most powerful years of Sir Lyndon as prime minister. And he had a sense of history because he was with the prime minister, the great master, uh, often on a daily basis. They traveled together uh, so he could tell you stories. He kept many of the records of uh, Sir Lyndon Pindling's uh, speeches. Uh, if you wanted to find out something about what was said or what wasn't said, uh, he was often the person you could go to. So we're going to miss him for all of those reasons. Um, it's just unreal, as I said. And um, I hope that the people of West Grand Bahama, Grand Bahama in particular, can find uh, a mechanism to pay tribute to the work which he did to put Grand Bahama on the map. He was a champion for Grand Bahama, never backed away from that, was unapologetic about it, um, and was really pleased at the direction the government was taking with regard to the new developments with the Grand Baha Port Authority. So for all of those reasons, he'll be missed. And I certainly am very, very sad today, uh, having learned of his passing. Well, thank you, Minister Mitchell, who's joining us via Zoom here on our continued broadcast for a special report, um, um, so to speak. Um, in the aftermath of the news that Minister Welchcombe, the Minister of the Minister of Broadcasting Information and Social Services, has passed.